So the first nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction I want to look at is that with Grignard reagents, or uh, at least organometallics in general. We'll start with the Grignard reagent. Uh, and we saw that Grignard reagents do nucleophilic addition with both ketones and aldehydes. We'll find out with acid chlorides, acid anhydrides, and esters. Uh, the reaction is just a little bit different. We can actually add two equivalents rather than just one. Uh, and so in this case, if we kind of look at uh, your methyl magnesium halide here, is the equivalent of having a methyl anion here. And we're going to do nucleophilic attack. We'll kick the electrons up there. So we'll kind of map this out and look at the mechanism. So we'll have a negative charge on oxygen now. So we'll have attached that methyl group, and we'll still have the chlorine attached. So, and we get this tetrahedral intermediate. And the reason we call it a tetrahedral intermediate is that your reactant's sp2 hybridized and trigonal planar. The product of this step is going to be sp2 hybridized and trigonal planar. So having an sp3 hybridized tetrahedral intermediate is unique. And so, hence the name tetrahedral intermediate. So, but these electrons are going to come right back down. We'll kick off the leaving group. And that leads us to our intermediate here. Uh, but this intermediate here is a ketone itself. And ketones will also react with the Grignard, as we saw in the last chapter. And they'll do nucleophilic addition. So we actually get two reactions. And the first reaction is going to be substitution. So and that'll form a ketone. And because ketones react with Grignards as well, uh, we'll get one more equivalent reacting, but it will be in a nucleophilic addition reaction instead. And so you can see we come up with our alcohol where the carbonyl used to be, but we've added not just one, but two equivalents of the Grignard reagent here. So you've got to say excess here. And if you only say one equivalent, it turns out it's not going to work out as well as you might think it will, especially with like the ester. It's hard to add only one equivalent to an ester. Uh, but most of the time, you're just going to be adding excess here anyways and adding both equivalents. Uh, we'll see in a second, though, if you want to add one equivalent, you should change the reagent up instead. Oh, one thing also to note, it works exactly the same way with the anhydride and the ester. The only difference here is instead of having a chlorine leaving group, you've just got a slightly different leaving group, either a carboxylate or an alkoxide. Uh, but the reaction in principle mechanistically is no different except for the leaving group. So it turns out for the acid chloride as well as the acid anhydride, if you want to add just one equivalent of organometallic, you can. Uh, but instead of using the Grignard reagent, we're going to use what's called a lithium dialkyl cuprate, written out commonly like this. Uh, but here's kind of the overall structure here. And you can see that uh, in this case, your alkyl groups are bonded to a copper instead of a magnesium. Uh, the bond's not quite as polar, and these aren't quite as reactive as Grignard reagents. Uh, and in this case, they only add one. So these will react with acid chlorides and anhydrides, but they won't react with the ketone product, which is why you can isolate the ketone as a product. Uh, so in this case, your first step would look like this. Same nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism as, as before. Uh, the big thing here, though, is that we can add only one equivalent rather than two. And I know there's two methyl groups here. Only one's going to react in our reaction here. Uh, but the key is we can get the ketone product and get just one addition. Doesn't work for the ester, but it does work for the acid chloride and the anhydride.